So, hey, everyone, welcome back to BWMB, our first interview of 2022, and I could not be more over the moon. Y'all, I'm going to try not to fan out. I always tell y'all that. I'm going to try not to fan out, but this is us. This is our generation for the grown grown. She has been a part of the culture. Terry J. Vaughn is with us today. She's an uh, um, entrepreneur, because that's what we're going to focus on today, the business of things. But you guys know her as an actress, producer, director. Some of the things you're seeing on TV now, I'm so excited about how she is is um, positioning our voices, our Black voices in the marketplace. So Terry, jump, Terry J, jump on in here. <laughs> well, thank you so much. Thank you for having me and inviting me to be a part of your network. I appreciate that. Absolutely. So let's talk about what do you have? You have so many things going on right now um, with the acting. I've seen you all over the TV screen, but also behind the camera. So tell us about some of the things that you're involved in now. Oh, yeah. 20. What are we in? We're in 2023. So 2022 was really amazing um, for me, both behind and in front of the camera, um, because I, I love both. And people always ask me, well, what do you like better? And and I don't want to stop acting and I don't want to stop directing. I really do love them both. And uh, last year I was really fortunate. Um, I was on three television series last year. Um, Johnson on Bounce TV. First Wives Club on BET and um, Cherish the Day, Ava DuVernay show on OWN. Um, so it was a very, very exciting year for me. Um, and it's continuing. Um, so I'm currently prepping for um, a television show that I am directing. I'm directing two episodes of Kingdom Business for the upcoming um, season on BET. And I'm directing a Christmas movie also for BET um, after I wrap that. So I'm very excited. <laughs> I love that. I love the BET Christmas movies, by the way. They were so good this season. <laughs> um, yeah. So can we talk a little bit about the transition? Because most of our viewers will know you from your work in front of the camera, because sometimes we don't get to get all of the goodies when you when you transition to um, the work as a director or a producer. And so tell mm -hmm. us about when that transition happened and some of those first credits and, and what made you decide that you're like, oh, I know what I'm doing back here. Um, so, and it, people always say, when did you transition? So I don't really feel like I transitioned. I feel like I just included. So now I, I, I do it all. <laughs> um, and it started, I would say, well, I've been producing for a long time, even when I, I've been living here in Georgia now for, I think 13 years, but before I ever moved here, I had a production company called Nina Holiday Entertainment when I was still living in LA and we got into the producing space, me and my creative partner, her name is Cass Secrets Beatles, who's an amazing writer. And we teamed up because we were told, we, um, she had written her first novel years ago when I first met her and I loved her book and I wanted to turn it into a television series and this was after I'd done Steve Harvey's show, after I did All of Us. And I was like, so what's next for me? And I found this book and I was like, oh my God, this would be an amazing television series. And so I, um, we went out and we pitched the show and the feedback we kept getting from the networks and production companies was, oh, well, this voice doesn't sound like a black person. This doesn't sound like a black woman. And we were like, mm, but a black woman wrote it and it's her voice. And what are you talking about? So that kind of air under us. And so the two of us just became like, uh, we were just like on fire. Like we are going to create shows for ourselves and nobody's going to be able to tell us what's our voice or who's our voice because nobody can tell us it's our voice. And so, um, so that's how the whole producing thing got started was because we were told no from the networks for a show that we wanted to create. And so we were like, okay, we'll just do stuff on our own. And um, so that was the introduction to Nina Holiday Entertainment out into the world. And um, as far as directing, um, when I moved here to Georgia, like I said, about 13 years ago, I started teaching acting classes to a up and coming actors. 
and um, work new talent and working in a space of instructing them, guiding them through scene study classes. I just kind of got bit by the bug of acting in that capacity with actors. And that's what made me interested in directing. And so the first thing I ever directed was a, um, an independent movie that we produced ourselves um, along with a, another girl from producing, um, girlfriend of ours, Ricky Hughes, who has Magic Lemonade Entertainment. And so we cast, wrote the script. It was called Hashtag Media... Um, Hashtag Digital Lives Matter. And it starred um, some really fresh new talent at the time with DC Youngfly, um, B. Simone, Ernestine Johnson, uh, Emmanuel Hudson. And they were all new, like this was their first movie. And um, we didn't really have a lot of money. We couldn't hire a director. So I was like, okay, I'm going to direct this. It's hood, it's comedy, it's new talent. I got all that on lock. So, um, so I directed that first project and that project has opened up so many doors for me with the networks and just started getting hired by TV One, BET to direct some of their stuff and just been off to the races ever since. Oh, always, I can't hear you. when nobody's when when I don't have somebody back here with me, I'm always messing up the Zoom. So I was muted, but I I just was <laughs> in love with that story, and I didn't want to make noise while you were in it because having you you mentioned all of the new talent, I always feel like you're kind of in front of trends when it comes to our voices. And so, what where do you think that innate like kind of foresight comes with you and and the projects that you work on or you accept? I think like really we're all creative. We're all uh, created as, as creative beings, right? We were all really blessed with the gift of being creative in whatever way that is, whether you're a doctor or a lawyer or a painter, it's like whatever you're doing, you're creating something. And so I think where a lot of people get stuck is just not trusting their instincts in that creative space because things come to mind. You think about something and you kind of just belittle it or put it to the side. And what I've learned to do is to honor that creative space within me, to really honor that instinctual voice. Um, just like, oh, I want to do a story about blah, 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 blah. And me and Kaz, we're just daredevils and we just go for it. And a lot of times you're absolutely right. It is ahead of the curve. And we've created several things that we've like pitched out into the universe. And, you know, we had the the thought to do it, but didn't necessarily have the funds or the backing behind us to get it done. But lo and behold, six months or a year later, we'll see what it was we had already thought to create that happens all the time to us. So, you know, when we think of it now, we just try to really get on top of it and, and trust that there's a reason why it came into our mind, came into our spirit. It's for us to create it. So yeah. we just move in that vein. I love that. I'd love to drop a gem on the ladies from there because I hear this a lot in our community where that happens to people. I have an idea. I didn't jump on it. Then I see someone else blow up with it. And you seem to have really positive energy about like, okay, that wasn't for me at this time and I'm keeping it pushing. Do you have any advice for our community in terms of how you just keep positive energy around? Okay. All right. We're on to our next big bright idea. Yeah, because I mean, and not to say that we, we don't get disappointed and get mad sometimes, but you do, but you just can't hold on to it. You got it because it doesn't, that's not going to do me any benefit to sit there and keep venting, keep being upset, keep being mad at the industry or whatever. It's not going to benefit me in any way. The only thing that benefits me is to learn from the lesson and keep it moving. And like I said, we're creative beings. That was just one idea. Guess what? I'm going to have about a trillion more before my life is over. And, you know, some of them will hit for me and some of them won't. And it's not really my business to judge what's going to hit and what's going to not hit. What is my business is if it came to me, God gave it to me, I need to make a move on it 
I don't know what it's going to do in the world, but let me just move forward. And sometimes it's just um, putting it out there and moving forward yeah. for for whatever reason. Sometimes it is for the content to actually be creative and put in the world. Sometimes it's to make a connection and share with somebody. And now I have a new, um, you know, I have a new ally or a new friend that was created just from that idea. Um, so it's all purposeful to me. It's either lessons or um, uh, productive in some kind of way yeah. and trusting that always. Yes, I love that. Gems, give me the gem emojis, guys. Um, <laughs> and, and staying in that space of talking about the business of things, what do you think has been your secret sauce for really kind of handling business and making sure that, you know, you are making, you are a working actress and there are so many people who have been in the industry and don't have the finances to show for it or the finances to do their next and best. So what has been the biggest lesson you've learned, like in terms of taking care of you in the bag? Um, I think the biggest lesson is not being afraid to ask for what you want. Um, and I think a lot of times any like friends and, and stuff that I work with. Sometimes it, especially when working with friends, it's like, I don't want to be the one to make the deal. I have to trust that my people are going to make the deal because, you know, we're friends and I'll be like, oh, I'll just do it because I love you, you know? And there is time and space for that. But sometimes you got to let your reps do the business because that's what you have them there for. And I think that sometimes we get caught up in that, especially as women, because we're such nurturers and we just yeah. automatically want to be supported we, and to support others. We automatically want to be liked and all those things that make us like second guess our business mind. Um, so just kind of learning to not operate there and to trust that I've been blessed with, you know, reps that can help guide me along the way. Yeah. I'm not afraid to ask questions. Um, and again, I think it still all comes down to trusting your instincts and then being smart. Yeah, I've been in this business for a really, really long time. It would be sad if not learn how to like save my money and, and stack because, you know, it, this business is up and down. I can go six months and not work at all. So that means the six months that I worked prior, I needed to be smart about how I was going to save, where that money was going to, yes. um, because I don't know when, where the next gig is coming or when it's coming or where it's coming from. So just being smart in that aspect too. And I've always been like, kind of like that, even from a long time ago, I'm just learning how to just not be just uh, irresponsible yeah. with the money. <laughs> Ooh, that's a good lesson. Irresponsible with the money because it's tempting. You know, somebody puts a hundred K in the bank yeah. account. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and still not to say that you don't live your life because I do think that life is about experiencing it. So I'm not, I'm also not one of those people that I'm not going to like, I'm not going to take that trip because I only have a hundred thousand dollars in the bank and I want it to be, you know, you got to keep it living. Yes. Yes. I sat them on the table. Sorry. No, um, we, we are moving. This is a real empire back here, ladies. And speaking of empires, what does team Terry J look like? What does team Terry J? Yeah, like, so who's on your team to support you? Like, oh. we're always talking about like, okay, look, we can't build this village by ourselves. What does your right. sort of uh, team look like? So, and I would say that the team has different, different layers and different compartments because my family is my team for sure. I have a very supportive husband. I have very, you know, understanding kids. Um, you know, they know who mommy is. They know what, what, um, what my purpose here and you know and I'm out where me and my husband we're very open with our kids about our journey about how passionate we are about our work how much it matters to us and I think it's important for them to see 
um, mommy and daddy going to do work that we love, that matters to us. We're not slugging going to a nine to five that we hate and, you know, coming home exhausted and complaining about our work. When we go to work, we're excited. And, you know, I get to talk to my kids about it. And I got to work with this person today or, you know, just sharing that. And, and they're, my family unit is very supportive. So I think that's number one. Um, and then, you know, I have a great group of girlfriends and they are kick-ass, badass girlfriends. And we're always looking for opportunities to work together. And I think that that's very, um, very helpful for this journey. Um, and then I have, you know, of course, an attorney and, and an agent um, that I, you know, that I, I really love. I love my team right now. And, you know, sometimes you outgrow teams and then you mm -hmm. transition to a new team. And that's the the way of this business is. But I would say right now I'm, I'm with a team that I really, really feel like is um, what I need for me right now. And they are great and helping me kill it. Because <laughs> you are, you really, really are. I love that you mentioned your girlfriends. And so I want to talk a little bit about girlfriends. And there's a I love this new energy that people are putting out there about nurturing relationships. And so what do you yeah. think makes a good girlfriend? Um, I think somebody that um that you can that you can like really share with and not feel like you're being judged or you or somebody that's looking to get something from you yeah. besides the connection. Um, and I, I have that and, and people that are going to be honest and not, you know, not, not yes. And people I've never wanted to be around. Yes. And people that everybody's telling me all the things that I want to hear just so, you know, they stay in your good graces. No, I, I need friends that's going to tell me, okay, you wrong right there, or that's not right. Or you should try it this way, you know, and we're all like that with each other. We don't bite our tongues. We're all very strong, passionate women um, who genuinely love each other and want to see each of us win. It's funner when you get to win with others, you yes. know, it's, it's so fun winning by yourself. I feel like that's not winning. Yes. I always tell, we tell our girlfriends, I don't want to be the richest friend in the room. I want to just surround ourselves with success sisters. So let's yeah. we all have to win. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. So I'd love to just stay in the relationship space for just a little while because you know, okay. balancing building and family, and you've mentioned how supportive your family is. And what do you think are the things that you do that, that, that give them reasons to support? Because oftentimes we're saying that, oh, my husband isn't supporting me. My kids are all over the place, but it's oftentimes, well, what are you doing to, to make sure that's the, the love that you're getting in return? I think that, um, the most important thing is being honest and open and genuine, like sharing your life with them. It's not two separate lives. To me, this is all my life. So it all kind of like meshes up together. Um, my, my, you know, I, I, I love my work. I am living in my passion in my work. I would not be the same person if I was not doing what I'm doing. Um, and just as equally, I love my family. I love my kids. I love how they challenge me. I love how they ground me. I love how they love on me and need me. I, that's a part of me too. I would not be the same person if I didn't have all that. So I think really just being honest and genuine and sharing your life, this is not like a secret some secret that mommy just has and you guys just have to understand nope this is a part of mommy I'm living it out loud I want you to experience it I want you to see me loving what I do because yes. I want you to do the same thing I want them to have abundant lives doing something that they love Oh, that's good. Gems 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 I love all the gems <laughs> uh, because you know well, the thing about it is we at different levels in your career or whatever your chosen path is, we're all as women, as women building are facing very similar 
things. And so I love, I appreciate you being so candid with us about, um, you know, what your secret to success and balancing is, because that often is a big challenge that we hear. Yeah. And it's not always, it's most time it's not nice and neat and compartmentalized. Most time it is not. Like I said, it's like messy and mushy and it's all those things. And sometimes they overlap. And sometimes, yo, I do miss a basketball game or an ice skating competition. And I miss them sometimes and I feel horrible. But, you know, it's it's the it's a part of the the journey. And um, I got to be true to me. And just like the same thing, when there's time set aside for that ice skating competition or basketball game, Mm -hmm. and I make the commitment and I tell production, I'm going to be, you know, I got to fly out this day because, and I'll be right back. And just making sure that I'm equally giving my time and my consideration and my love to, to both sides of my life. Ooh, there we are, some harmony. Uh, So if we stay right there, um, you know, there is this, whether you're are a celebrity in the in, in the in the truest definition, or you are building yourself as an influencer or an entrepreneur personality, people want to be all in your business. They're just nosy and they expect you to give them everything. And so you have yes. a social media yes. presence. Um, so how do you balance what they get? and what they don't get? Um, For me, I'm always, I always want to give something that, that literally is giving you something. I'm not posting something that is just random, um, you know, that, that's not going to be uplifting, inspirational, make you laugh, make you smile, make you think. Anything that I post is for, for that reason. Um, and I think that that's really my, my only boundary is I'm not going to share personal stuff. That's not going to benefit you in any way. If I share any bit of my personal life, it's, I'm sharing it for a reason. It is very purposeful and it's not just for nothing. Um, so I think just staying in that mindset for me has just allowed me to know what to post and what not to post. Oh, yes. See, you guys, we got to get those pillars together. What is for them is for them and what is the intent for doing it. So yes, yeah. in alignment with what needs to happen. So Terry J, what is the big next for you? Um, Big next for me, like I have those two gigs that are immediately next that I'm doing, but I do have some other things on um that's out in the atmosphere that I'm praying is going to happen. And I feel really good that it's going to. It's another movie that I really want to do that we um, are producing um, with some girlfriends. I don't want to say too much until it's just really greenlit, but we're very close. Um, so hopefully after these two episodes of Kingdom Business that I will be directing in, um, what month are we in? In February, March. And then flying to New Jersey to shoot the movie March and April. Um, after that, hopefully I'll have this other movie lined up. One of them. <laughs> Yay, I love it. And then just tell, if you don't mind telling the community, like how would you like for us to support you? Um, of course, you guys, we're going to drop all the links so you can stay connected with her on social. So you'll be the first to know when this movie is green lit and ready to roll. But how else can we support you and the causes that matter? Um, I think, like you said, I I pretty much post all that stuff um, on all my social media platforms. And of course, you know, nowadays it's like watching stuff. So we get those numbers, um, sharing, um, sharing the information once we do post it that this is airing then or, you know, watch this now and all that stuff. The more you guys repost that, share it, watch, comment. Um, all of that is helpful. All of that is very helpful. Well, we will make sure that all the ladies get connected with you on social and know when you are dropping something. Thank you so much, Terry J, for joining us here today at Black Women Mean Business. Thank you so much. And I'm so happy for you and so proud of you and keep doing your thing. Thank you. So until we chit chat with you amazing ladies again, remember to stay out there trusting your brilliance.